Good morning, and welcome to Creative Mornings May. This is May, wow. <laughs> um, the theme this month is backwards. It was suggested by Chicago. Um, you're at Creative Mornings. Um, if you don't expect to be, well, welcome from in off the street. Um, I'm Erica Hall, a co-founder of Mule Design and the San Francisco organizer. That's why they give me the mic. Um, I'd like to thank everybody who helps make this happen, uh, especially uh, Benjamin over there at the Mimosa Station, uh, doing his part to get your Friday buzz on early. Uh, Jenny Chu on video, uh, Tom Carmody taking the photos uh, that will appear on Flickr later, and um, Whisk SF, the provider of all the pastries and snacks and things like that. Very important. And of course, Parasoma, our host. So, as you tweet this morning's talk, use the hashtag SFCM uh, so everybody can see the clever things Kevin, I'm sure, will say. <laughs> pearls of wisdom. Are you ready with your pearls of wisdom? Ready, though. Yeah. Okay, and uh, uh, this, mor this morning's speaker, uh, Kevin Chang, uh, has been around the internet uh, for quite some time. You might remember uh, his fantastic comic series, OK Cancel. Uh, which was uh, really super. He's been the product manager at Twitter, director of user experience at Raptor, the designer of Yahoo Pipes, I'm just reading off his bio now. And uh, he has a book out now that I really love, especially if you're finding new ways to communicate complex ideas that uh, make them really fun and interesting and engaging for people. It's called See What I Mean? How to Use Comics to Communicate Ideas. And I really uh, recommend it. I'm, I'm actually reading it myself right now. So, no further delay, here is Kevin. Thank you. Thanks everyone for uh, waking up to come here, or staying up if you're that kind of person. Um, I think being around the internet a long time is like the new way to measure age. I was feeling kind of old from that. Um, all right, so the theme is backwards. So. Um, Thank you for coming. Uh, any questions? <laughs> All right, no. Uh, <laughs> uh, OK, so you guys are going to need pens, or pa pens and papers, or pencils, because it is about comics. and yeah. Or iPads with drawing applications. Come on, you all have draw something, or draw something too. All right. As you're doing that, with one hand you're reaching for your pen, and the other hand, raise your hand if you are an artist. So it's creative mornings, and maybe a third of you raised your hands, which is actually really high, by the way, even in design conferences where I've talked about these things, and the entire audience are designers, there's usually like a quarter or less that uh, raise their hands. So there's a, there's a book uh, by a guy named Gordon McKenzie. He used to work at Hallmark. Um, and it's called Orbiting the Giant Hairball. And it's about creativity in a large organization. It's a great book. Um, it's been around for a while. But uh, what I'm going to talk about is an anecdote that he says in, um, in that book, where he goes to kindergartens and asks the question that I just asked you. And you can probably guess how many people raise their hands when he asked them that, right? Everyone's like, oh, yeah, I'm an artist. Um, and then he went to first grade and asked the same thing, and about half the people raised their hands. Um, and then went to second grade, and you've got like three, hand, three and a half hands. You've got one like, I guess, maybe. Um, and it's, it's not like there was some kind of exam along the way that said like, OK, no, you're not an artist anymore. Next time somebody asks you if you're an artist, you're not allowed to raise your hand. It's, that's not happening, right? So, so what is happening? Well, um, the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, that with the pen and paper that you have, uh, I'd like you to draw your neighbor. And you have a minute. Draw an accurate representation of your neighbor. Let's say 20 seconds. 
And when you're done, do not show the other person yet. Uh, next to that accurate, completely accurate rendering of your neighbor, um, I want you to draw a smiley face. Okay, and then show your neighbor, or give it to them as a gift. <laughs> Okay, so how many people apologized as they were showing him? This is you. All right. No, it's really you. No, see, see this thing here? Okay, so I don't know how your first one turned out, um, but what I think is the second one, the smiley face, is an accurate representation of your neighbor. And if you did that successfully, then you are an artist. And, <laughs> Every elementary school kid says they're an artist because they can do that. Uh, so the theme is backwards, uh, and I want to talk about uh, things that have been around a while. Comics. Um, really, if you think of comics as sequential art, telling story through a series uh, of pictures, uh, comics have been around a really long time. In fact, uh, if you look at this little comic, that kind of, what does that look like? It looks like an iPad, right? That's actually an Apple storyboard from 15 years ago. Um, and it's not an iPad. He's putting an SD card, or, or probably a flash card at that time, into, into this device. He's just come back from the hospital with his, he just had a kid, and he's gonna load all the photos from his digital camera into, into this device. So the concept of storyboarding and comics have been around for a long time in use for products, um, but we've sort of, we, we're, we have all these new tools. Here's this, uh, the 12th prototyping framework that's released this week, and here's this wireframing tool, um, and here's a thing to do site mapping. But like, we sort of forget about the basic tools that really help us conceptualize what we're trying to do. Um, and I think comics is one of those things. Um, and I'm not just talking about even the tools, but sometimes using these tools to tell the story of what's happening in the past instead of what's happening in the future to help you inform the future. So this is from my book. Uh, this is a comic. Uh, can you guys read that okay? So it says, uh, what's that song? I, I, I know I, this is going to bother me. And uh, she's like, oh, I'll just use a, uh, oh, wait. I just realized that. I, so this, this is a comic to say, like, oh, I'm just going to use Shazam. Um, and actually, I, I had a different comic, and I forgot to put that one on. <laughs> so there's another comic where it's, it was the before Shazam. It's like, this is how things were. And this is how things are, you know, before Shazam was made, what was it like? It's like, oh, this is going to really bug me. What is that song? And then you're going to go home, and you're like trying to Google some of the lyrics. And that was like the comic that we drew first, and then you can draw this. Um, and this is another view of that. But we did this also at Donna, the company that um, I'm one of the co-founders of right now. Uh, Donna is a personal assistant, and Donna tells you, uh, one of the things she does is tells you when to leave to get to your meetings on time. Uh, so you can see a few people here, these empty seats don't have Donna. Um, so, uh, so what we did at an offsite last summer was go, well, what is it like to like, try to go to a meeting right now? Um, and so this was like, I just had a flip chart. I was like, meetings. And we started drawing it. And um, it's hard to read this because it's my handwriting. And uh, the guy on the far left, he's like, oh, man, what time is it? Uh, is like, oh, I wonder if I have to, is there going to be traffic? And he's like thinking. Meanwhile, the other guy's still like talking. He's, he's in this other meeting and he's not even paying attention anymore. Uh, anyways, and it goes on. He's like, oh, uh, he's trying to text the guy like, hey, are we still on for the strings? While the other guy's still trying to have a meeting. And anyways, it goes on and on. This is like two pages where we talk about what it's like to try to get to something and not have the peace of mind of having this thing that tells you. Um, and you see there's like post-its that, that uh, are covering some of this stuff. So we kind of did an, a post-it info viz uh, where the 
pink post-its are like, this part sucks. Um, and then the green post-it, depending on how close it was to the pink post-it, is how well can we solve this suckage? Um, and how, how well can technology do it? And so like some of these things were like, yeah, we can do a pretty good job of it. And then there are some things where like, that's ah, kind of harder to do. So it was a way for us, even though we were kind of on our way to developing this product, it was a way for us to kind of step back and go like, well, what is it like right now to do this thing? And how, how can we solve it? Uh, wh what are the problem areas? Instead of just going like, hey, there's this cool new thing. Now let's see what problem this thing can solve. So there's a few things specifically about comics that I think are really awesome uh, and make, make comics a really powerful tool. And I'm going to blow through them. Uh, uh, this is like 50% of the book, so then you'll be done. Um, <laughs> Uh, so communication, imagination, expression, motion. These are the four properties. So communication, uh, comics are a kind of visceral form of communication that's even uh, more basic than words, I think. Uh, so this is, uh, this was Tom, is Tom Wells, but he was my uh, design manager way back at Yahoo. And this is the t-shirt he owns. And what is the, what is the dog doing? Farting, Farting yes. Somebody once said, I think that, that, talking out of his ass. Somebody was like, oh, it's a salesperson. <laughs> um, so Tom, I was like, that's a great shirt, Tom. Tom's like, yeah, yeah. You know what's really funny is like my two-year-old, who's never read a comic in his life, he looks at this and he knows exactly what the dog's doing. He's like giggling every time I'm wearing this shirt. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that, that makes sense. Because comics have this, they're using a visual language that's sort of, more basic than words, more basic, I mean, like letters come from hieroglyphics or, and, and they're basically pictures. So comics are more visceral. And if you've read Asterix or Tintin or any of those comics that have been translated to hundreds of languages, the reason they translate so well is, is uh, partly because they're comics. And there's like all this visual language that just carries across no matter what language it is. There's like squiggly lines to show motion, speech bubbles, or really angry lines. All of these type of things are just sort of understood inherently. Uh, the other piece is imagination. And if, of course, I'm I can't really talk about comics without talking about uh, Scott McCloud's understanding comics, which whether you care about comics or not, if you care about communication of any sort, you should read that book. Um, anyways, this is an example uh, from his book. Uh, no, I'm not in his book, it's just the, the example is like it. Um, so going from here to here, um, this side, uh, just like this, the s smiley faces that you drew, this could be anybody. Um, and the more you move into the detail, the less abstract it is and the more it's like, oh, that's, that's like Kevin with short hair. Um, and you can use this to your advantage. By abstracting away when you draw things, you can say like, oh, this, is, this could be you, or this could be somebody you know. So when you're reading a story, reading a comic about like, what is this person, who is this person, and trying to relate to it, uh, you can see like that, that, you can put yourself in that picture. And you can adjust the detail. So like, some things are very detailed because they're not supposed to be left for interpretation. And then some things are left more abstract so that you could put yourself in there. And this applies even to UI. So back at Yahoo, we used comics for uh, one of our design processes. And at first, we put in a search results page as like one of the comic frames, because we're like, oh, yeah, we already have that. That's not really part of the thing we're testing. It's just part of the story. And then, of course, everyone focused on that. They're like, oh, this is not useful to me. And then we're like, OK, that's not really the point. So we had this instead. Um, where we, we gave enough for people to understand, like, okay, this person in the story is at Yahoo. Um, and you could do even more abstraction by not even showing the screen, but just showing enough to illustrate what's going on. Um, expression, so comics, I think, are more powerful than words or pictures alone. Um, there's like, I'm sorry, thank you. These words seem like pretty objective statements. You know the meaning, appreciate, uh, sorry, apologetic or appreciative. But when you map them to different faces, all of a sudden, it has completely different meaning. Sarcasm, real sincerity. So the combination of these two. And you can get a lot of expression out of very little. Just uh, eyes, 
Uh, you can get that from Will Eisner's book. <laughs> um, so motion. Uh, this is the most. This is the coolest thing I think about comics. So this is basically somebody jumping. But if I just add white space, um, it already has a different meaning. It seems like this person is jumping much higher or abducted by aliens and then returned. Um, and you can say like, oh, that's, that's just frames in an animation. I mean, each of these represents an equal frame. But even like the length of panels can change the meaning of things. Just like, oh, that, that means like that's a long time that's passed. Or repetition. If I just have the same thing and don't, don't change anything about the picture, it's like, oh yes, that page is taking a long time to load. <laughs> and then context of it shows that the time is different too. So it's not like, you know, regardless, it's always the same passage of time. And of course, you can have like different reference points that also show passage of time. So there's so many different things. Uh, one of the industries that use comics really well to save on money because production costs are so high is, of course, the movie industry. So Matrix had professional storyboarders. Um, Steve Skros, who does stuff for Marvel and others, uh, he drew detailed storyboards for the first Matrix movie. And this is from that. And this is a scene from the Neo fight scene, the sparring scene. And it's not like you look at this and think, oh, Neo just learned to clone himself and create five versions of himself uh, during the fight. No, you, you understand that the repetition of him, even in one single frame, is showing motion. So comics have, have like really interesting properties when it comes to that. So comics can communicate in a really basic level. Um, you can uh, abstract away the details. They express more than words or um, pictures. And they communicate time in a really interesting way. But most of all, they're really, really funny. And that's really actually powerful. Like, that's not to be underestimated. I think of comics as sort of a Trojan horse for information. Um, like, I was at a mailbox, and then I, um, in my mailbox, and I looked at these postcards, and I had this comic from Kathy from USPS. And it was like about where I can buy stamps. Um, and if it had been like a bunch of bullet points about, where I can buy stamps, I would have probably just recycled it right away. But instead, it was like this comic about Kathy looking in her purse for some stamps, and then her guy going like, don't worry about it, I can just go to the ATM, or the grocery store, or whatever. And I'm like, huh, that's kind of funny. And then I'm like, crap, I just learned information. <laughs> um, OK, so we're past 920, and I have a bunch I can keep going. Should I keep going? Keep going? Yes. All right. OK, because you're going, OK, that's great, Kevin, but you draw comics. Uh, I'm not going to get to use this, because only like a third of us put up our hands when we said, who's an artist? Um, so uh, if you can draw basic shapes, then uh, you can use comics in your work. Uh, there's a lot you can do with basic shapes. It's, and all you need to do, you're not trying to use this for like packaging. Right? This is not for like. This, you can use comics internally, you can use comics even, even sometimes on websites I've seen a lot of stick figure comics and it kind of adds a kind of charm to it. Uh, but there's very little that you need to do. Uh, if you guys still have um, your pen and papers, you can kind of play along here. So if you just draw this a bunch of times, like this, and just try playing around with different mouths, and you'll see that it, it's surprising how much you can do just from changing the mouth. So here's some examples of that. Um, so you could try just circles, lines, changing shape of lines, uh, showing teeth or not. So the mouth is really, really expressive, especially when you abstract it away to being a smiley face. It's actually better being a smiley face than being a really detailed person, because then, then you're trying to show subtleties. So the inverse, also true. Try drawing a bunch of these, two dots and a line. And then change the eyebrows. Do a bunch of different things with the eyebrows. And this is sort of like the uh, Wally -E thing I showed you earlier, where they managed to show a great deal of expression just from the eyes of the robots. They don't even have mouths. So again, how close they are to the eyes, what, which way they're facing, are they symmetrical? All of these things 
uh, really change the expressiveness. And that's really important for, for doing a comic where you're trying to show like, oh, this person's really frustrated with this process or whatever else. Um, now, if you, are, if you are looking to kind of draw a little bit more and you are, you're like, well, my proportions are always wrong, I'm just gonna give you like a really fast 101. And this, is, this probably like significantly changed like the course of my life was when like seven years old, my dad sits me down and he's an electrical engineer, by the way, not an artist. And he goes, here's how you draw a face. And he, he goes, draw an oval. And the eyes do not go a third of the way down like most people draw them. Draw a cross, the eyes go right in the middle. Um, and then the bottom part divide into thirds, and that's the bottom of your nose, and that's the mouth. And that just like completely changed all drawing that I did from then on. So just knowing this one thing, take nothing else from this, take that and read Understanding Comics. Um, and once you know that, you're like, okay, you can imagine this is a ball, and if you move it around, all of a sudden you can draw a person facing any direction, and it looks right. Uh, and then, of course, any rules that you learn are made to be broken. So once you actually get the hang of it, you deliberately exaggerate things, because, and, but you know that that's sort of what you're trying to accomplish. You squash it, you change where the eyes are, and then you can do really interesting things. Um, equally with stick figures, there's also proportions that are kind of measured by the head. Uh, I use this much less religiously, because it really doesn't matter as much, but the head thing, the face, that's really awesome. And once you do this, just using stick figures lets you do really expressive comics where people are interacting, where the way they're leaning and the motions and their eyebrows and their mouth really impact the story that's being told. And then once you get the hang of that, you can just add meat to the skeleton, essentially. And you can do different shapes of stick figures to whatever, whatever works for you. Um, I kind of like ones that have a body because it's just actually turns out to be easier to draw than the straight up stick figure because then it's like, is that an arm or a chest? Um, and then really quickly, I'll go through some tools. So you're like, okay, that's great. I'm still not really comfortable drawing stick figures. Um, all right, that's okay. You can trace. That's what we all did when we were younger, right? You can trace things. Just take pictures. Now, this is different from taking pictures and making a comic out of it. Because then, when you show people, you're like, here's a product concept. They're like, oh, hey, yeah, there's Kevin. No, 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 the product, con pretend that's not Kevin. See, I named him Joe. So instead, take you could take photos of, con of like, oh, this person's using a phone, and then like trace over it. Like, just make it really abstract so that people can put whoever they want into that story. Um, back at Yahoo, some people use things like Yahoo avatars to make comics. Uh, one of the companies, one of the groups, I think Yahoo Autos did that, which is cool because you've got this generator and you can just create whatever people you want. Um, so I played around with it after I heard about that. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. There's like Kevin, and then there's like Skater Boy Kevin, and Depressed New Yorker Kevin, and then like <laughs> Mac Daddy Kevin. And then I realized that that was sort of it. Like if I needed something that was not there, I was stuck because I can't draw in the same style that this is in. So it's a, it's a cool tool for generating people, but you may want to just use this and then trace from it. Uh, there's a guy, Bryce Johnson, who after kind of one of the earlier talks about comics that I gave, he created this awesome template that um, basically he, he arranged a bunch of toys and then created a whole template on Flickr um, for this. And you can email me and I, I'll send you the link to this. There's also uh, a template called Design Comics uh, by Martin Hardy who hired some people at Sun Microsystems and he created hundreds of permutations of people doing on the computer, on the phone, or whatever, um, which is really cool, because then you can just plug and play. Uh, my only issue with this is, to the point about the photos thing, it's a little bit too photorealistic. Like, you can't really tell, like, is that angry and angrier? Like, I don't even know what the difference is. So it kind of loses some of the advantages of smiley faces. Also, it's kind of scary looking. <laughs> um, so, and then there's uh, applications. This one's called Manga Studio. There's uh, Comic Life, which lets you easily throw in images and throw on um, captions and stuff like that. 
So this, this one I highly recommend. Uh, there's a online comic creator called bitstrips.com. Strips, plural, please remember that. Um, <laughs> uh, and then there's uh, the one that I like most is Pixton, P-I-X-T-O-N. Um, not at all because they're from Vancouver, which is where I'm from. But actually, no, they're, they're really a good product. I like their style more than Bitstrips. Um, they have like rotations of characters. You can create your own characters and reuse them. It's really a pretty good tool for generating comics. Um, so, hopefully uh, convinced you that comics are an interesting medium to explore when you're doing ideation or product development process, and that uh, it's not actually that hard to do it. Uh, so, thank you guys. Um, a couple of notes. If you are interested in the book and don't have it yet, there is a uh, discount code, Creative Mornings, uh, for 20% on the Rosenfeld site. Um, and also, we're hiring for freelance designers at Donna. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Yes. Yeah, I guess you, you mentioned sort of the movie industry is really high cost for production, and that's the reason that they go through the comments. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering the sort of changing landscape in development, where it's much cheaper to make a prototype now. Yep. So the question was, um, movies are really expensive to produce, and that's, that's why they use comics, but in tech, it's become cheaper and cheaper to prototype, so um, how does that change things? Uh, is that accurate? Yeah. Uh, so um, it's true. It definitely has changed, changed things such that there are times where you should just build a prototype and try it out. Um, what the comic is doing is actually something that we, we increasingly forget because we can just go straight to building, which is what is the story? What are we trying to solve? What is the environment the person's going to be in when they're using this product? Right? These are things like, which you could potentially solve by building the prototype. As long as you're building the prototype and going out there to 100 people and showing them and, and doing that, then yes. But really the comic is, is this en uh, encapsulation of the context and the story um, and the, really the like user and user experience design. Uh, and no UI is involved. Generally, I try to avoid any UI in the comics. It's just like what is happening when you're using this thing. Um, so it's almost like unrelated to the prototype. Other questions? Yes. Just um, so, like you've been doing this for a while, and obviously you wrote this book. Into it. How is it changing for you, like your use of it over time, like, you personally? The uh, question was, how, I've been doing this for a while, uh, so how is this changing for me over time? How has this changed for me over time? So the first is, um, when I first started doing it, I just felt like uh, a joke, I guess. It was like, this is silly. Um, and, then, uh, and then Google Chrome came out with a comic, and then like um, Airbnb uses comics, and Twitter uses comics, and I'm just like, whoa, this is... This is kind of awesome to see. Um, and not to say that that was because of me, but uh, just really awesome to see the movement. Um, <clears throat> because then, then there's more conversations that can happen about it. Uh, aside from that, um, I've discovered kind of more and more uses because I start experimenting. So one of the things where the, what we did at the offsite of drawing how things are now, previously I'd only use comics to say, this is the thing I want to build and what it's going to feel like. And this is actually a pretty recent revelation for me. I'm sure lots of other people have actually already been doing that. But for me, that was like, oh, hey, why don't I just draw what's happening right now instead? Yes? So your storytelling method is really like in the moment. It's not pre-planned, and then you start drawing. It's kind of like as you're drawing, you're telling the story. Oh, so is the, is the process kind of as I'm drawing and figuring it out. Um, so it, it depends. I, I, at the offsite, for example, it was very much like it's talking about how do, how do we do this thing right now. And so we, there's, a, there's a group of people in front, and, we're, and 
me or somebody else, in fact, I had other people do the drawing deliberately, um, and we'd be like, okay, well, this happens first, and then this happens. And then you know we're like in, inserting new things and stuff like that. So in that case, yes. But really, just like anything, it's only if you've done the right research up front so that you can do that. Because um, you have to know the personas of who you're telling the story about. In our case, we're just talking about something that we know, which is how do, how do we go about going to meetings. But we may be telling a story that's completely unrelated to anything we know about. So you have to do the research up front. Um, <clears throat> I think that's, I was going to say that that could be subjective to say it worked or didn't work, but the example I thought of was actually pretty objectively the comics were better. <laughs> uh, so okay, I'm going to give you an example that answers both of those questions. question was marketing, and are there uses for marketing, and can, um, have I ever imposed my will on others and then oh, for <laughs> comics and had them had it turn out not to work. Generally speaking, I'm very much not a I have a hammer and everything is a nail kind of person. So I even use comics pretty sparingly, probably less than I should. Uh, so I haven't encountered that. Uh, probably, if anything, the inverse. Um, the marketing thing, uh, this is one of the things I do talk about in the book is are ways that people use it. People are using it for internal processes, customer support teams are using them. If you use a comic to start conceptualizing the product, it ends up be basically being telling the story for marketing too because it's like you were already telling the story of what does this do. So that's interesting. Uh, at Raptor, a video game startup that I uh, used to work at, uh, they, we had a comic to say what does this product do right on the home page because we wanted the five second rule of like I get it in five seconds. Um, the, uh, he's, he'll never watch this video. Um, the CEO <laughs> of Raptor um, was very, very much against this. Um, and uh, he finally said we're going to put in like a traditional like carousel with like bullet points and screenshots. And I was like, fine, we'll test it. And we put them both up, and the comic had twice as many sign-ups as the, as the carousel. And uh, now that I'm not there, there's no comic, by the way. <laughs> yes? So uh, comics are quite useful for starting to use software and how to build it. What's an example of software where the comic is actually part of the UI and the, using the software itself is actually using the comic? That way? Have you seen any tooltips? Um, sorry, you know, like, like tooltips. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a comic thing, right? The question was, uh, have I seen comics used in the software to help explain it? So, I, I, like, I, I, is, that, is that an accurate? I mean, that, that's definitely one example. What about even in the software to use it? Like, that the entire interface is comic-based? Oh, the entire interface is comic-based. Uh, I have not. Um, UX pin is a little bit like that. I haven't used that. Like when they like reset up the the onboarding. Like a layer of comic to like point you around it. Okay, I hear UX pin might be like this. Sorry. By the way, I wasn't trying to be flip. It was, I was, I wasn't. I did understand the question, but I was trying to illustrate that actually it is around, and we don't even realize it. That elements of comics are have always been around, and we may not even realize it. But. Uh, I, I did understand what you were saying, and that's really interesting. I think that we see it a lot in kind of onboarding processes and things like that. Um, integrated into the software, I think it's going to really depend on the software and it being right for the software to do that. Um, but I can't think of any examples off the top of my head. That's a really good question. Thanks. Yes?
Uh, so you're talking strictly tools, like. Uh, so for me personally, the question was around, um, I'm going to generalize the question a little bit, around the iPads, coloring books, um, the, the, the shift towards like it's easier to just find an iPad and draw on an iPad than a coloring book. Um, so my book was actually drawn on a Wacom Cintiq, uh, so directly on the screen. And, um, and I love it because if I screw up, I can change the size of it or move things around. Um, <clears throat> that doesn't mean I don't like drawing on paper as well. And I really don't feel strongly either way. I think both tools are very powerful, both digital and analog. I think they play together really well as well. And we're just going to see a lot more interesting things as we see more like recordable pens and other types of, types of devices. All right, cool. Uh, if you guys have any more questions, feel free to come up. Uh, thank you. Yeah, big thanks to Kevin Chang for coming in, getting up so early. Oh, no, I'm still up. No, I'm still yeah. <laughs> for a few more minutes. Um, and thanks to all of you for coming out. Next month we'll be talking about food. Um, but by all means, I get the book. See what I mean. Uh, see, it's so early, I can't even remember that simple title. See what I mean. Um, we'll be tweeting out the discount code if you didn't write it down. It's a really fantastic book. And then to learn more about Donna, that's D-O-N dot N-A, on the internet about the um, per awesome personal assistant that's coming soon. Fantastic. Please do grab your cups and plates and things on the way out, and hope to see you next time. Have a fantastic weekend.